Hey everyone, I'm Keith Robinson, it's MNI TV, and the video about to watch is a conversation between me and James Morgan on keeping data at the heart of your COVID business survival strategy. So I think it's a really important conversation, perhaps not happening enough, um, so I wanted to share it with you. So part one is going to be a discussion on the key questions the business is going to need to answer, and why data is at the heart of that. Part two is more practical steps and how this can be implemented on your enterprise um, to give yourself the best chance of surviving. So it's a really important conversation. Don't forget to watch both parts, watch to the end, share, subscribe, um, and you're gonna see me real soon. Thank you. Thanks for coming on today, James. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about um, keeping data at the heart of your COVID survival strategy. So this was born out of conversation that we had during the week with a client. Um, and I think it's a really important point that I'd like to discuss with you and share with the audience. So just to give some context, I'd like to reflect back to what I heard in the conversation, where I see the problems are, um, and I'd like to get your thoughts. So um, in terms of the context of the company, so it's a large multinational operations um, pretty much in every country in Europe. Um, they're at the sort of brunt of the COVID shutdown, let's say. Um, and one problem they've got is um, the different speeds in different countries. So in one country, 80% of revenues disappeared. In another, it's relatively stable. So that's one challenge we've got to overcome. Um, but as our sponsor rightly pointed out, um, the problem they've got is there seems to be two conversations happening at C-suite. Number one, slash and burn costs, understandably. We need to get the cost base down quickly. Um, and number two, in relation to sort of technology, it's very focused on IT infrastructure. So what bugs do we need to fix and how can we keep servers up? Um, and what's missing in all of that is how can data play a key role in both the short term survival strategy? Um, and then how can we use data now um, to innovate in the short and medium term through this period? Um, and that seemed to be missing um, a C-suite conversation in this particular company and I imagine a lot of multinationals throughout Europe at the moment. So that's what I heard. Is that similar to what you heard in the ad to that? What's your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's definitely what I heard. And, and what we're seeing here is what businesses have needed to know for a while is everything you do in a business is, is an end-to-end -end process. Most businesses create products and services and deliver them um, to customers or provide them to customers, be that in a physical world or in an online world. Mm -hmm. uh, and what uh, this terrible um, epidemic at the moment has forced companies to look at is how does my business work end to end? What measures can I take in the short term when, when markets um, and customer bases completely change their activity? Mm. And there are rules such as lockdowns, which prevent people going out, prevent employees going to work, etc. Mm. So how do I know what is happening in my business? How do I know what to do? And how do I know how to react in the short term? And of course, companies are looking to reduce costs. Absolutely. The main thing you've got to understand as any part of a business is the business has to survive. Mm. And absolutely cutting costs in hard times is, is an important factor however one how do you know what costs to cut and still maintain your core business mm. how do you know what your customers really need in these times how they're psychologically going to react to conditions and then as hopefully we get through this problem and people start to be uh, released from lockdowns companies are start to go back to function what will those customers need in the immediate terms where will they need those products or services and how do you make sure that you're in the right position to ramp back up and meet their needs as they come out of these crisis times what's the first things that they will be looking for that you used to physically provide couldn't provide online and they will want immediately as they come out of a lockdown um, what are the things that will go wrong um, with uh, the products and services that customers already have that once it comes back into a physical wor world will need servicing, will need fixing, will need repairing, whatever, so that you can actually predict um, what stock you're going to need. You're going to predict what employees you have um, available and what employees you need to put where. And also what 
what certain um, multinational companies are realizing is that geographical boundaries, which have traditionally um, fixed the way they operate, mm. are actual slight misnomers. As borders open up, as workforces release, where do you need to divert stock? Where do you need to divert resources to when parts of Europe come back online at different times? So uh, places like Denmark are lifting restrictions. Uh, other parts of Europe uh, have not applied the same boundaries uh, and, and, and restrictions as others, such as Sweden. Mm -hmm. How can you make sure that you can divert activities perhaps towards those markets that are already on or switching back on? Mm -hmm. And then sadly, as this crisis goes around the world, how will problems in India, problems in Africa potentially affect sadly people but also your supply chains and your employees and third parties who work in those countries how are you going to react how are you going to support them through these crises mm -hmm. so sadly um I, th I think there will be a major impact in in parts of asia yeah. and quite rightly lots of companies deploy re rely on resources or supplies from these parts of the world certain companies have reacted by saying well we'll just we won't pay you mm. um we'll cut our costs and reduce our relationship with you others hopefully are saying right how can i help in that part of the world to make sure that a key partner survives through this tragedy and is available when we need to come back online and when we need to start working again so what you're saying there is that this is kind of chapter one of this story. And as this unfolds across the globe at different speeds, having data at the heart of your map as you navigate this as a large business is going to be crucial to the ones that survive, thrive. Um, uh, absolutely. Do, do you want to navigate this uh, problematic time through gut feel mm. and through just your knowledge of the business, which don't get me wrong, is absolutely essential. Or do you want to be able to look at the numbers and understand the stats? Mm -hmm. The other thing companies, and I would always say in, in most times, companies that look an awful lot of their own data. They look at what's happening within their organization and that's perfectly sensible mm -hmm. and something I would advocate a lot of the time. However, now are companies looking enough at open data, at third party data to understand what's happening in the world are they understanding the trends that drove towards a lockdown and the, the policies that will be put in place to release that lockdown mm -hmm. so for example there's news today talking about um perhaps a staged release um of the lockdown for younger people well okay what does that mean in terms of employees what does that mean in terms of um, customers and what does that mean in terms of your strategy to recover? So are you following those trends from um, the health data, from the behavioral data? So if you look at the daily um, announcements by, uh, sorry, press conferences by the, the government on um, the COVID-19 situation, one of the graphs they show up is social interaction. Now, at the moment, absolutely, we need to drive that down to reduce transmission of, of, of the virus. However, as the markets open back up, have companies got the right ability to monitor those kinds of stats to say, right, OK, where is transport coming back online? When are people starting to go back into work? Yeah. When are people starting to take trains and buses again? And ultimately, what's going to eventually happen to the global travel market because that's that's an important thing are people looking at psychological surveys that are being done yes lots of people are suffering suffering at the moment everybody's got an eye on people's mental health what will their reaction be as the as the doors open back up mm -hmm. are they going to return to normal behaviors i think certain studies say it takes 90 days or more to become something to become, before, become a habit yeah. so are people be kind of habitually stay in more habitually be less um uh, sorry more reticent to travel abroad mm -hmm. are therefore we going to see 
hopefully as restrictions release more uk holidays later in this year and more demand for those um and what is the gradual turn on of the glo global economy going to be and data drives all of these decisions yeah there's two really good points you made there so firstly just understanding the best you can the global context so you can fit that into your strategy in the short term but also that point around understanding your customer base enough so you understand the different segments and how you need to target them differently so that example if younger people are going to be let out quicker clearly your marketing strategy is going to be very different to those people in the next three to six months versus the older generation who might be locked up for, for further i think that's really interesting yeah. yeah if you haven't got that data then you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunity compared to your competitors who do have that data uh, and, and that's the thing is this data is essential you have to understand your customers understanding the relevance to that person at the time yeah. and how they are feeling at that time so even during a normal working day or a normal day of somebody's life outside of crisis times people will be different at home as they are at work as they are when they're interacting with their friends or with their family underlying they're still the same person but they react differently in different contexts to different messages at times like these when 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 there's um extraneous circumstances um people's behaviors will um be heightened to the situation they're in and therefore you've got to understand the psychology of that individual and how um to provide the right messaging to them Mm -hmm. Some of those people, it will be around the safety and security of the services. Others, it will be around the opportunities as the release um, hopefully happens and we all go back to a more, more normal life around um, more experiences that they weren't able to have while they were under lockdown. Yeah. So it will be about tailoring the messages, but it also uh, it will be about showing that you're there and available mm -hmm. and understand them. Um, willing to to find a way of meeting their needs. Hey everyone, me again. And um, thanks for watching to the end. Don't forget to watch part two of this video. Me and Jay's Morgan. Um, and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, um, and you're going to see me again real soon. Thank you.